good afternoon. As a result of incredibly helpful efforts by Paul Donnelly of Scotty on Patreon, we are going to review the Galaxy Tab S5. But first, do you like it? It's been a minute. It's been a hot minute. Get all moved in now. So I took I took a fewer shelves, more things approach with this version of the studio, and I'm digging it. We'll start with the only one of the only cons to this product that I can even think of, and that is the Wi-Fi dead spot in the corner. This one. Here's the camera. There's the dead spot. You go like this. The Wi-Fi cuts way down or disconnects entirely. No clue why that is. Probably just a combination of placement, antenna, oh wait, focus, antenna space, and just, you know, where they put the chip. And of course you're going through a metal bag now, which I like. The glass bag, I mean, it's cool and everything, but I, I feel like what I'm holding is way too fragile. With this, got that nice fresh aluminum. Can you hear it? Also, if this color was on a food, I would, I would eat it. I would eat it. Beautiful. I mean, I don't know. I would, yeah, it's rose gold. All right, whatever. Either way, it's gorgeous. I like it a lot. The fingerprint scanner being embedded into the power button is really clutch, actually. It turned out to be quite useful. Picking it up, and like, okay, boop, and then da 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 da. Now, in the future, would it be nice to see an in-display fingerprint scanner? Maybe like, you know, that big on the tablets? It'll probably happen, just because such a big deal has been made out of it with the S10. Can't see it not happening, actually. Maybe. Precious Phoebes. She's back. But anyway, partially because it's such a th thin device, and partially because the bezels on it are so thin, or slim, I should say, which really isn't a bad thing, but it's a little difficult to pick up to turn that button on. So what you could do is just double tap it. They included a way. Same thing with, okay, here you go, down, down. Same thing with the S10s and the LG G series, double tap to wake, and I've gotten super spoiled to that. It still has quad speakers and they sound amazeballs. If I could record in stereo right now, I would do the Dolby Atmos demo because it sounds pretty pimpin'. I, I approve, especially with Atmos. Boop. On the quick settings, and it sounds as close to 360 degree sound as you can get from one source. I'll say it like that. Don't know how they do it, but it's pretty awesome. Yes, the Wi Fi dead spot exists. Yes, it's pretty widespread. Is it device crippling? No. Should as big a deal be made out of it as is being made? Well, see, there's there's four corners and two hands, so that's three to, no, twice as many corners than I can hold it once with all my hands. So that means if I hold it this way and the Wi-Fi drops, Oh, wait, wait. Oh, dude. Flip it over. At least it didn't arrive bent like some other tablets from some other company that we are aware of. And at least Samsung didn't try to be like, no, uh, it's not cutting out. And then you show them, that's not cutting out. It's a, a menu part of the manufacturing process to have a place on your device that drops Wi-Fi if you cover it with your hand. No, 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 no. Is it unfortunate? Yes. Is it really weird? I mean, should it have happened? Oh, of course not. But flip it over. Move, and DeX will work while it's flipped over as well, which is another part that I found really badass is DeX. You can turn this day basically into a tablet PC. Mm. I'm sure most of you are already familiar with that with Dex, so I'm not just I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail there, but you can get it on here now. 
while having linked, you know, Bluetooth keyboard, mouse, both, preferably both. I did not know that you could access Dex on the tablet without hooking it up to anything. Where you could just like, boop, turn it on, check it out! And it was quite a surprise. Very pleasant one, actually. Everything works well. It does run PUBG. Not quite as well as the S10, but that's because the S10 is a flagship and the Tab S5e is... I don't know. I don't think it's a flagship. I think it's just like a... This is our badass mid-range tablet. For those to whom it is important, it weighs a total of 400 grams. With how thin it is, I mean, it's, it's a pretty light tablet. I mean, you can't feel the weight, but you can see how easily I can... I mean, I guess this is the, the, the closest representation of how light this thing is, is the ease at, with which I manhandle it. Battery life is phenomenal. First time I charged the 7,040 milliamp hour battery up to 100% capacity, it lasted six days on a single charge with moderate use and lots of standby time. The thing is a freaking beast. Here, look at this. Beastly. 10 and a half inch Super AMOLED display. It is only 1080p, but I mean, okay. It's a tablet. Well, one could say, yeah, it's a tablet. It needs to be 2K, but also for the price and it is not like they're premium, so it's fine. It's beautiful. Not that people need headphone jacks on tablets quite as much or near as much as they would like them on cell phones, but this one doesn't have one. Only the charging port in the middle and nothing else. So this was the first, receiving this was the, excuse me, first time that I've ever had to deal with a USB type C to 3.5 millimeter dongle. I haven't used it once. <laughs> but like, why would you? You can hook these up to the tablet and be good. I wonder, actually, now that I think about it, I want to. I wonder how easy it is to unpair with the phone and pair with the tablet, because I don't think that you can pair two devices to the buds at once. So if the process is pretty painless, then you'd be like, oh, okay, well, I'm pulling my tablet out now. I'm gonna, you know, unpair and then pair. Found them. Done. Watch my thing. The model that I got is the 64 gig. Yes. This is, it is 64 gigs. I pretended to turn this tablet on, but it's it's dead because I watched Netflix. I went to sleep watching Netflix with it last night with it on like 8% because I knew I'd be asleep before it actually died. And my phone was really dead, so I had to have an alarm. Anyway, four gigs of RAM in this model. And again, it runs things. I haven't, not once have I had a situation where I was like, oh my God, this thing's going so slow. It can take pretty much anything I've thrown at it. Something else that I've found to be kind of a bummer, but also understandable, is the lack of S Pen support. You can't use the S Pen on this tablet right here. That's something that they reserved for the Tab S4, apparently. And I'm digging this metal, although it is kind of slippery. This is like the same kind of problem that the iPhones ran into with the 6, I believe, when they switched back to that, or switched to that brushed aluminum back and the rounded edges and stuff is like a wet fish if you squeezed it too hard. <laughs> oh! I would love to get a case for it and a screen protector, but I have not acquired those yet. It doesn't have a haptic engine in it at all. My tablet has no vibrator. So when you plug it in or a notification comes in or something, there is no in-between between mute and volume. Or audibility, I guess. Oh, I was up far too late yesterday. I know, can, if you can tell, can you tell? It's not bad, is it? We're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Because the big thing... What there is lots of demand for are smaller and smaller bezels. With the tablets, you can put a bigger and bigger screen into a smaller and smaller device, the smaller the bezels are, which is great. But we hold these things like this, or like this, like this, but there's only, there's about this much space that will not respond to your touch. Only about that much dead room. So the ultra slim bezeled tablets, the power button is kind of hard to hit from the side when it's sitting on its face though, or sitting on its back, excuse me. Hey, it lives! I thought the battery was dead. Bam, got him. I'd say probably about a 30 second boot time. I am addicted to doing this. 
with tablets. It's just what I do. Been doing it for years. This fingerprint scanner power button is really fast. I feel like with the with the advent of the in-display fingerprint scanner, I've gotten used to it being slightly slower. But this one's like, boop, and then you're you're good. You're in. That's fine. Wait, let me see if I can. Like, bam. <laughs> Continuity. Like, getting a text message in as long as your tablet and your phone are connected to the same Wi-Fi network, you can respond to and read the text messages from the tablet. And then the tablet will use some Samsung magic and communicate with the phone. Really cool idea, except it doesn't work yet. I did a little bit of reading on it and found out that it, I mean, obviously it will, but they're like, we're rolling it out. I would have preferred them to roll a little bit faster, but can't win them all. Over time, I really hope that they introduce more apps that are compatible with continuity because what they showed us in the demo for the S10 release concerning the communication between the tablet and the phone, that looked pimping and I want more of it. Please. I wonder if my ginger ale is cold now. Did I mention the camera quality on this thing? Like I was almost done and I was like, oh, you know what? I'll just like snap a quick picture right here. And I was like, wait a second. This looks way better than I expected it to. You know, it's not S10 level, but very nice picture considering it's just a single lens on a tablet that's not a flagship and as a feature that's just kind of an afterthought with tablets nowadays, at least the, the rear facing one, the front facing one, video chatting, okay, that's cool. But uh, speaking of which, so the front facing camera is kind of garbage. Even in optimized lighting conditions like this, photos from the front facing camera are lacking, but not even a flagship. It's it's technically a te it's technically an E-series. Well, I don't know, I don't know. The way they picked the naming thing on that one's kind of weird. Because like, is it a Tab S series or is it a Tab E series? Because then what happened to Tab A? Those are the mid-range after all. I don't know. If ever there were a best not top of the line t Samsung tablet, it would most definitely be that one, the Tab S5e. I don't care about the, wi the dead Wi-Fi corner spot. Don't hold it that in that corner. I mean, I know that, that people are gonna be like, it's another case of, it's, it's Samsung's version of you're holding it wrong. I'm telling you you're holding it wrong, not Samsung. So if you bought it and you're like, oh no. Oh yeah. Don't let the E fool you. This thing is pretty dang premium. It doesn't have the S Pen support and it's probably not quite as like thick or heavy as the Tab S4 just because of the glass, or powerful, actually. But, for the money, if you want a really good tablet, it's that one right there. On a more personal note, do you like it? Do you like it? I had toyed around with the idea of using this gentleman's hair, facial hairstyle, because, you know, I can't style anything up here. So I'm like, hmm, let's give it a try. So I used it as a reference picture and it took me like 45 minutes to get the shaping right, but I'm kind of digging it. A more consistent upload schedule will hopefully be established very soon. Matter of fact, this week. Because moving, both financially, emotionally, and physically drained the shit out of me. On top of work being not fun at all. So I was like, you know what? You took some time to yourself last time you moved, last year, or just about the, around this time actually. So why not do the same thing this time as well? So I took some me time and now I'm just really struggling trying to get back in this groove. I am back. And so are the Scotties on Patreon, the ones that place $10 or more per month. And those are, we will start with the gentleman that helped me get this in order to review it. Mr. Paul Donnelly, my friend, thank you from, from the bottom of this muffle right here for making it possible for me to get this and review it. Then we have Robert Bitter, Ilanda Cibro Paracord Design, Jeff Schmo, Jared Elder Studios, Derek D, Ian Lewis, Mario Torres, Jatinder Law, Anthony Jackson, Eric Price, Steven Nichols, Nick Hawks, Sin O, Unit Omega, and Christopher Caswell. Pizza. 
I stay with my Scotties. My Scotties are my boys. I ride with them. And I put that on the generation. Next, we have these two per beamers, the ones that pledge six dollars, I mean five dollars a month, and those are Stephen Cameron, Colin House, Solar Star 81, Paradoxed, Grant Stockton, and we have a new one! Welcome Samsung 0804. Thank you so much, man. And last but certainly not least, we have the Beamers, the ones that pledged off per month, and those are Encrypted Bunny, Rob Ralston, Vincent Papineau, Fidget, Jamie Ives, Roman Van Rokhuizen, Nicholas Clark, David Larson, Elixir, and Rico the 13th. Keep tabbing it up and stay beaming. <laughs> Looks cooler on camera than it does in person. Just keep, just wanna keep looking at it. <laughs> Out of practice, man. Gotta, gotta get with it. Is it off? Is it dead? It's dead. <laughs> First, we'll get the negative things out of the way. Something that everybody's like, oh, Travis, Travis, the dead spot. Da, da, da. It's there. The fingerprint being embedded into the power. Well, oh, that's not gonna help. Per part of why, or man, I'm out of practice as. F that's what I get for moving. Gotta break through, man. This is bullshit. I haven't. Not once have I have have I. <laughs> excuse me. Damn it. I've had one on a case for my S3, like just the rings. God. The slippery nature of the rusted aluminum could be easily fixed by finding one of those adhesive things, like a ring, to install into the back of the device. Yeah, don't give up. It's a little calm. Yeah. And some other, and so are the Scott. We will start by making sure we're still in frame. 